Time for a story. I want to tell you about a mistake that I made because I think it contains an important lesson that we can all learn from. About a month ago, I did a Skype consultation with a guy who was really unhappy in his relationship because he and his girlfriend were constantly fighting, constantly arguing. Listening to his explanation, he talked a lot about areas that he felt like he could improve. Things like boundaries, leadership, emotional intelligence. And so taking my cues from him, we spent quite a lot of time talking about what women are specifically looking for, what makes them feel safe, how to properly set expectations. This is a recurring theme in my consultations, men looking for a more thorough understanding of female psychology and specific advice on how to apply that knowledge when there's arguments or fights going on. You see, a lot of men tend to argue with women in the same way that they would a man, you know, it's all logic and facts. And they think that if they can just prove to the woman that she was mistaken in her assessment or that her emotions are invalid, then the whole thing is going to be settled. Women don't work that way. And so I spend quite a lot of time explaining to men what is motivating women at certain junctures in their relationship, explaining the psychology, why she does this, why she does that. Now this is relevant because remember, this is a video about a mistake that I made. So in this particular case, the relationship was clearly not functional. And he talked about the ways that he felt like he was letting his partner down. And so naturally the advice that I gave was tailored to that information. We talked about things that he could do to improve the situation, ways that he could be better. Now, while talking to him, I was thinking of how admirable it was that this guy was so sincere and authentic in his motivation to improve, how much he wanted to fix his relationship. He was obviously really intelligent, really good guy, had a good heart, and I admired that sincerity. He displayed something that so many people in dysfunctional relationships refuse to do, which is a willingness to take responsibility. And so we talked, and we did cover some of the ways that she was dysfunctional, some of the ways that she could improve, but Largely because he was the one actually talking to me, we talked about things that he could do to improve, things that were in his control to fix his relationship. But towards the end, he shared something that really made me stop and take notice. He said that sometimes he and his girlfriend can argue for periods up to four hours. That's crazy. Four hours is a really, really long time. And so... I stopped and I thought there must be more to this because that's not normal. And so I began to ask more questions. And as we talked, he revealed that he actually had an audio recording of one of the arguments that he was having with his girlfriend. Now, I'm not going to talk about the ethics of recording audio of somebody without their knowledge or without their permission. That's a very nuanced topic and it deserves its own video. So I'm not going to go into that, but I will share that in the consultation, we did end up listening to a small segment of that argument and it only took a couple of minutes before I realized my mistake. It was clear from what I was hearing that this was not a regular couple just having normal disagreements and fights about things that could be explained by gender differences. That's not what was going on. This was an abusive relationship. Over and over again, what I heard in the audio recording was him attempting to answer one of her questions. Not really questions, more like accusations, but he would engage with her, try and understand where she's coming from. But as soon as he succeeded, she would shift the conversation and just come and attack him from a completely different angle. She kept saying that she was really upset and really vulnerable. And yet at another part in the conversation, when she was sort of caught out on something, she gave this laugh that was really bone chilling. It was, it was awful. She, like, she found the whole thing really, really funny and that that could just be dismissed. And then right back to being upset and vulnerable, like she could switch emotions like that. Even when he was successful in pointing out something horrible that she was doing, she would flip it around and make it his fault. It's that, that tired old like, cliche you hear about abusive relationships. It's not new, but you know, like, yes, I'm abusing you, but the reason that I'm doing this is because you made me upset and therefore I'm justified. Everything was his fault. And I, I just asked him to stop the tape. I couldn't listen to any more of it. There's only so much bullying, diverting, gaslighting that you can listen to. So once the tape stopped playing, I apologized to him because I really felt like I had let him down. Based on what he told me, I had assumed that there was at least partial responsibility for the dynamic between the two of them. I didn't 
realize the truth, the reality of what was actually going on. The truth is that this was not a couple having a fight or an argument. The truth is that he was in an abusive relationship. Now, with this new understanding, the conversation shifted radically. I talked about what classifies as abuse and then talked through the specific points of her behavior, explaining the psychology of why what she was doing was abusive and telling him why with somebody with that kind of mindset is never going to be convinced. It doesn't matter what he does, he's never going to succeed. Now, from his perspective, this consultation, which was actually his second one, we had spoken four months earlier, but he felt like this consultation was worth a million dollars. Finally, his relationship made sense. All of his unconscious thoughts and feelings were being validated. We talked some more, I recommended some books for him to read, and he was so grateful and complimentary to me. He's really, really good guy. But when we finished the call and we'd hung up, truthfully, I felt terrible because think, what would have happened if he hadn't played that audio recording of the call and I hadn't heard what I'd heard? He could have finished that call with me thinking that he was responsible for that dynamic and that he had the obligation to try and change and fix it. And I would be complicit and responsible, at least partially, for him having that belief, when the truth is that there's nothing that he could do to fix it. The correct course of action to take with an abuser is to leave that relationship. You do not stay in a relationship with an abuser. But the thing is, is that she had done such a good job manipulating him and twisting the facts and getting into his mind that she had actually convinced him that a lot of this was his fault. So much so that when he sought out independent advice from me, private advice, secret advice, that the way that he presented it was part of that narrative that she had spun, that this was largely his fault. And so my advice, you know, I took my cues from him. Because he was such a high quality guy, really nice, really successful, I didn't properly account for the possibility that he was in an abusive relationship and that what he was telling me wasn't necessarily an accurate depiction of reality. Moving forward, that is something I'm going to be a lot more aware of. And I think collectively, we all need to be a lot more aware of picking up on the signs that a man is in an abusive relationship. I have close personal friends who've been in abusive relationships with women. And sometimes I knew I could see the signs and I spoke up. I'm ashamed to say that sometimes I didn't see it. And it was only after the relationship ends does the truth come out. And I start to hear stories about her behavior that makes my skin crawl. There are some awful, horrible, low quality women out there who are regularly abusing men and getting away with it. And part of my motivation with this channel is to provide information to people like my friends who might be in that kind of dynamic, but don't necessarily recognize it. They don't pick up on the signs or they don't realize that this abusive behavior is not normal and that you don't have to tolerate it just because she's a woman. I really feel like I let my friends down when I didn't see the signs because had I seen something then I could have spoken up, I could have intervened in some way. But it's difficult because men are often reluctant to speak out about female to male abuse. There can be feelings of lessened masculinity, feelings of shame, feelings of failure, and this prevents men from actually speaking out publicly or admitting to their friends, my relationship is a disaster, my partner abuses me. Do you remember in the story I was saying before about the consultation with the guy, how he told me that he and his girlfriend sometimes argue for four hours? Well, he actually admitted at the end of the conversation that he had downplayed that number, that truthfully, it was more like eight hours or even more. Sometimes they go an entire day from morning to evening just arguing but he was too embarrassed, too ashamed to actually admit that to me. Imagine that, eight hours of a woman abusing you, yelling at you, blaming you, gaslighting you, insulting you. Imagine going through all of that and not knowing that you're in an abusive relationship. Isn't that remarkable? I think it demonstrates how much society has failed us in actually educating men about what it looks like to be abused by a woman. And what's really disgusting is how collectively we have 
normalized low quality woman behaviors as though that's to be expected as though it's just a regular part of being a woman and that we all need to tolerate that. As you can tell, I am a bit triggered by all of this. It makes me a bit emotional to think about all this injustice, but that's part of what motivates me to make these videos is I want to help men. And I'm so grateful that you guys watch my videos and that some of you support me on Patreon because that's what allows me to continue to put these resources out into the world and hopefully help some guy out there who's in a horrible abusive dynamic and doesn't realize it. Maybe the difference between a lifetime of misery and a lifetime of happiness is him watching a video like this. But the lesson that I took from this is that I need to be a lot more cautious. I need to go more slowly. I need to ask more questions and I need to seriously account for the possibility that the man is not able to give me an accurate depiction of his relationship because he may be so brainwashed by his partner that he genuinely believes that what's going on is his fault. Or he might just be too ashamed to admit how bad things truly are and he'd rather keep that private. I think the larger lesson to be taken from this is that we can't keep our relationships private because that's where abuse happens. It's in the dark. It's where nobody's looking. Just look at how powerful it was to have a third party, me, listen in on a conversation that was meant to be private between the two of them. It was immediately obvious to anyone who knows anything about emotionally abusive relationships what was going on there, but he couldn't spot that because he was too close to it. I told him, based off what I've heard, I bet she does this. I bet she does this. I bet when you take this action, she always responds like this. I was correct. And of course, because it's not difficult to predict patterns of abuse. The power of abusers isn't in their originality. It's in their secrecy. So if you suspect that one of your friends is in a toxic relationship, please reach out to him. Try and get him to open up and share with you what's actually going on behind closed doors. We have this culture of individualism and independence, and that's not a bad thing, but it does have certain weak spots, which is the fact that fundamentally, from an evolutionary perspective, we are social creatures. We always lived communally. And the truth is that sometimes it takes the validation of a third party before it can motivate you to admit to yourself the truth of what's going on and then take action. And if you're in an abusive relationship, please know that you have nothing to be ashamed of. The shame belongs with her. And if you're unsure whether or not the relationship that you're in is abusive or not, then let other people see. Let them witness that dynamic so that you can get more feedback. We have to be there for each other because our society really doesn't care that much about men's issues when it comes to dating and relationships. But we as individuals can support each other. And I want to live in a world where good men are free from abuse and where narcissistic, horrible, low quality women are exposed as abusers and that no man ever falls victim to their tricks again. Is it ethical as a Western man to go to a developing country to find a wife? That is the topic of my latest video. In this video, I explain the moral differences between doing what's right for you as opposed to what's right for everybody. I explain whether or not dating in developing countries is a viable choice for all Western men. I explain the advantages that white skin and Western currencies is going to give you in developing countries. I talk about the disadvantages and the struggles that you're going to face dating a woman from one of these cultures. And lastly, I give my personal recommendation for when you should stick it out in the West or when it's time to look for a girl in the developing country. For every video that I post here on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon page. That means that at the moment, you're only seeing half of the total content that I create. If you'd like access to the other half, then please go and sign up at my Patreon page. It's just a $5 a month subscription and you get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive videos. It's a fantastic way to support the channel and I would love to see you over there.